Hi, I'm Dr. Gloria Richard Davis. I'm a fertility specialist. I also specialize in perimenopause, menopausal care, along with other women health specialty at UMS. When couples come in, we evaluate the male as well as the female because both partners may be contributing to infertility. If there is a male factor, one of the very easy, inexpensive things that we can use is artificial insemination. It's oftentimes confused with IVF. It is not IVF. It's where we take the sperm and we prep it, removing really the fluid part of it that can't go directly into the woman's uterus, and we prep it and put it uh, via catheter into the uterine cavity. So the way I sort of explain it to my patients is the cervical mucus is a barrier to allowing sperm in. What we're doing essentially is helping the sperm along its journey. We're giving it a ride into the uterus. And then that way you get more sperm into the uterine cavity and it's timed with when the woman is ovulating. So you're putting more sperm in the reproductive tract during the time that she is most fertile. When we look at um, men with male factor, we really divide them into severe and mild. There's no moderate. If the uh, patient has mild uh, male factor, then artificial insemination is the first option of treatment. If it's severe, then we have to discuss with them whether or not we try artificial insemination first or we go on to IVF. The other patients who come in are what we call azospermic. They have no sperm. The options there becomes donor sperm insemination, and that's been around since the 1950s. So it's you know, an option that is affordable, it's easy, but the couple has to feel comfortable with going towards using donor gametes. Generally, men are reluctant to come in. Oftentimes, they think it's her problem, it's not my problem. But it's important for them to understand 40% of infertility is really secondary to male factor. And simply doing a sperm analysis where we look at the count, motility, and morphology, how they're formed, determines whether or not there is a male factor. With male factor, oftentimes there is a medical reason in why there is a problem with sperm production. And so it's important to know that up front. The urologist is typically who evaluates the patients. And so if we see abnormality, we send them on to the urologist for evaluation and diagnosis. But there's also a genetic component to male factor. Um, and it's, again, it's good to know that but you won't until you do some sort of evaluation. When we see the couple and we decide what is it that's keeping them from getting pregnant, if it's male factor, then we'll still go ahead and treat them from a fertility perspective, but I refer the, the male to the urologist because he needs to be evaluated from a physical, endocrinological perspective to make sure there's no other reason in terms of why he's not producing adequate numbers of sperm.